Hi everybody, well I'm going to start again. I actually started to broadcast. I don't know if there's anybody there but I expected there might be some teething issues. Mainly because I'm here in Thailand if you didn't know. My name's Mike from MrMikeCorner.com and um, I'll say that I help people overcome the obstacles that stand in the way of their health, happiness and success. And I knew there was going to be some obstacles doing this live, particularly because of the Wi-Fi situation in Thailand. But also because I'm actually filming it here for Facebook and for YouTube and I'm filming it here for you guys. This is the live camera coming through this lens. Um, so I've got two cameras going. We're talking about personal power and it's possible that because this is the first of a series of talks by me chats informal little conversations sharing tutorials maybe but not really a lesson more of a conversation i'm aware that um people don't know what this is about so this is the first one hopefully when you see it you'll share it I encourage you to do that so we can get more people along so we create a, a gang of people which would be really cool I'm hoping that um, you tell people because I think it's really important that we get this information out and if you're watching this then share this information use this information uh, judge this information if you want you can see for yourself what's useful and I don't say that I'm right and I never say that you should take somebody's advice uh, and, and just do it because somebody says it. Um, just look at what's being discussed and what's being shared and as we go forward with um, a community of people who go live with me in my Mr Mike Garner page then I'm going to be talking about some really radical stuff, some powerful stuff and um, if it's for you use it and I'm available after the talks to um, to help you and guide you and to chat more which is free and um, if it's not for you well well that's fine tell me why uh, as long as it's positive and constructive this is a positive series of chats um, it might be controversial but it won't be um, it won't be nasty so I hope we, in a humanitarian way, can all stay friends. I'm offering this from my heart, freely. Because uh, I think at the moment, society, us as individuals, families, um, the world, society, it has got challenges. Now, I'm a firm believer that it's character building if we can rise to a challenge. In fact nations that overcome challenges survive and nations and countries in history that haven't overcome challenges have been wiped out so it's a bit of the survival of the fittest and uh, in Maslow's hierarchy of needs we have needs as human beings that have to be fulfilled we have basic survival needs and then we have emotional needs and mental needs and spiritual needs and relationship needs and educational needs but one of the things that's going on at the moment, I feel, which is what we're going to talk about tonight, if people join me, and if you aren't watching this live, I realise it's a Sunday afternoon in the UK and different times around Europe. But at the moment in Thailand, where I am, it's around about quarter to ten in the evening, about 21.45. And I watch the news here um, and listen to the news and views that's being portrayed by the media and there's a lot of fear there's a lot of doubt there's a lot of uncertainty just today um, there's a car manufacturer that's um, leaving Britain and it's going to make a complete town redundant because I think sort of 60, 70, 80% of the population the males work in that car factory um, and it's very common at the moment for companies to be looking at ways of cutting costs and reducing staff. Hi Claire, great to see you. Um, we'll have to have um, a one-to-one -one on cam now, now that I know that th this is working. Ultimately, when you look at what's going on in the world, 
and you only have to go to a shopping centre wherever you live and see the faces of people honestly how many people are happy there's a lot of uncertainty there's a lot of fear um, and it's challenging people feel insecure in jobs in lives in relationships there's a lot of pressures a lot of demands particularly on children uh, knife crimes rising children um, junior gangs youth gangs um, I don't want to talk about all the bad stuff in the world but because you know what it is and I know what it is and I'm, I don't pretend that we're living in the Garden of Eden, Eden or a utopia it's far from that but that's all on the outside in my opinion I believe and we'll talk about this as we go through more talks week by week and you'll, you'll get the gist of it anyway from what to share tonight is that if we change as individuals then we can have a greater effect then we can have a greater effect on the people that we associate with the people that I say we vibrate with that if we are strong if we are peaceful if we are kind and constructive and loving that doesn't mean that you have to be wishy-washy and weak uh, a lot of people think that kindness is weakness and I think it's a strength. But if we are strong and we are focused and we know what we stand for, then I think light will always overcome the darkness. And this comes down to our ability to be strong inside, our personal power. How much personal power do you think you've got? Hi, Rivon. How much personal power do you think you've got? You can put your comments and I'll read your comments and I'll say hi as you come on. And if you don't catch this live in the rerun, you can still put your comments because I'll keep up with every one of you that watches these, um, these presentations. But how much personal power do you think that you've got for yourself? How much willpower have you got? How much influence do you think you have? The ability to change things in your family situation, your work situation, your personal situation, your relationship situations, the world, your local community, all the things that affect you. Do you feel like you can help? Or do you feel helpless, hopeless? How do you feel? Do you feel lost? Because I think that at the moment there's a, a movement, an agenda to encourage... Hi Michelle! To encourage, um, I'm looking at two cameras, so if I look a bit cross-eyed, that's because I'm working on two cameras for two different forums. But I think there's an agenda to to keep us in confusion, to almost like keep us in slavery, slavery, to keep us down, to put us down. I think we'll talk about each one of those in subsequent talks. I think the food that we eat isn't empowering. I think we eat pretty crappy food. I think we're offered pretty crappy food, even though, you know, they, they, they're doing sugar tax and, and, and they say they're interested in our health. Um, I don't think the authorities have really got our interests at heart. I think they've got their own interests at heart and we've got to do it for ourselves. We've got to own our power and, and protect our power and take responsibility for it. I don't know what you think, but um, I think it's too little too late. And I think there's an agenda to it. So... If you feel powerless and you're watching constantly stuff that's on the telly, programmes, Coronation Street, EastEnders, um, Emmerdale, whatever it is that you watch, Neighbours, I'm just trying to name a few that um, I know I watch. I've seen in the past with my family uh, and my friends. The, these are the soaps that everybody talks about, aren't they, if you're into the soaps. Then really, what's the message that's Hi Denise, what's the message that we're getting for, out of all this? Because although we watch it and, and, and quite often we can't wait for the Christmas special where everything goes wrong and it's the wedding that all blows up. Um, so, so, so basically what I'm saying is, is that we like this stuff because quite often we quite like to see fiction that's worse than our own personal circumstances, don't we? You know, we sort of watch somebody else's disaster and we know it's not real. 
and we think well I'm not that bad but what it's actually doing is it's dumbing down our intelligence I call those sorts of programs chewing gum for the mind um, there's so much hi Lucy there's so much doom and gloom and yet people love the doom and gloom hi Denise and, and we sort of some people want more of it don't they I mean I can remember many years ago watching um, I'm a Celebrity and you know they used to put the hand into a hole and you didn't know what it was it'd be a spider and they'd jump out and that was like scary but now they're eating spiders and they're putting spiders in the mouths and, and they're putting helmets on people and putting hundreds of spiders and it's gone more and more extreme and you, you look at um, you look at the horror films I mean the horror films when I was a kid it was Dracula or somebody hiding behind the curtains and everybody would jump a mile look at the horrific stuff that's being shown now it's so extreme it's gone it's polarized to extremes because people are getting desensitized and in this being desensitized and sort of like what it does it makes you step back and ignore it it turns you into a zombie it takes your power away it takes your integrity away it takes your dignity away for a lot of people most of the people watching this i'm, I'm, I'm glad to say hi nick most of the people watching this are aware and awake, enlightened. So thank you. God bless you. But what I'm coming at is that the general population hasn't got that awareness. They're taking this in. This is affecting their minds. This is programming. That's why these television programs are called programs. Because it's programming. And it's affecting them. I mean, we only have to look at the the games that kids play and most of them are certificated but we know that kids are playing Grand Theft Auto where there's prostitutes and, and they win prizes and some of these prizes are some horrendous, horrendously adult stuff I think if you knock over a mother walking across the street you get so many points and if she's got a pram which is horrendous to talk about but this is considered entertainment and these war games war's not a game war's horrendous people get seriously hurt I work with soldiers with PTSD I've been over to Germany and, and, and seen the troops and it's not a game and yet people are buying these for Christmas presents for the children and adults are playing these things what's it doing to the mind do you think that people are just desensitised is this like what I call social hypnosis I think it is I think it is and it's not getting any better. So what do we do with this? I think we've got to reclaim our power because we are amazing. We are walking miracles. Just the fact that, well look at this, I'm, I'm in Thailand, 7,000 miles away and hopefully I'm still live. I've got two cameras here which is why I'm doing this. And here I am at a, in a different time, in a different continent. And how's this getting to you? It's getting to you, it's a vibration. It, it's being carried on a carrier wave. Not a wave like that. It's a carrier wave, it's a signal. And as we receive things from the outside in, as we get impressions from the television, from the radio, from telephone calls, from conversations where people speak and it vibrates, out of their mouth from their vocal cords onto your eardrums what actually happens is it's a vibration and even if you didn't know the words you would feel the energy the charisma the power nonverbal communication you would feel the energy which is what everything is energy interacting with energy now we'll talk about energy and interactions in other talks but are your interactions empowering? Are the people that you interact with, that you vibrate amongst, do they empower you? Or do they piss you off? <laughs> do they lift you up or do they get you down? Are they positive or are they negative? Now there are some people that will get you down, that will lower your energy. Energy vampires that you can't avoid, it might be your boss, it might be somebody in your house, somebody in your family, it might be a neighbour and you've just got to say hello every day. 
but we do have choices we can leave these jobs we can leave these relationships we can get away from these people in fact run away from these people sometimes it's not easy but ultimately this evening and over a series of talks we're going to be using and sharing techniques to help raise your power, increase your power, making suggestions and never saying that I'm right, as I said at the beginning, that will empower you, will enlighten you. That word, enlighten, maybe anybody that's watching, just write down your comments. What do you think being enlightened means? What do you think being awakened means? What should being enlightened feel like? Because a lot of people who are enlightened struggle. I, I read in some spiritual forums that you go through what is called a healing crisis, a breakdown that you have to be chopped down before you're raised up. That can happen. I've had disasters and nightmares in my life that have been turning points for me and have reinvented me and they've possibly been the best thing that could have happened. Some of the most serious moments of my life, my mother dying, my father dying. I've lost a child, had a stillborn. I had a spine injury, I had a stroke. <laughs> These things some people don't know about me. But I've learned from these things. I lost a job that I did for 32 years and thought I'd do for 40 years. But I had to reinvent myself because my spine injury stopped me from working. When I got married the first time, I didn't intend not to be married for the rest of my life, but it didn't work out and that was a turning point. And I was teaching martial arts and when I had my spine injury, I had a series of successful clubs and hundreds of students and it, it collapsed overnight. Why? I'm a good person. Was I cursed? No, I was gifted with those things. I signed up to experience this in this incarnation and I found the blessing, the, the learning and that empowered me. I didn't allow it to get me down for too long. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I call myself a doo-doo, not a guru and I'm human and I get it wrong massively but I tend to step back and work out where the learning is if I can. And sometimes I understand the learning instantly or within a week or so. And sometimes it's took me 10, 15, 20, 25 years from some of these nightmares and disasters to realise that where I am now is far better than where I would have been had I followed that path 15, 20, 25 years ago. It's joining the dots, if you like, seeing the bigger picture, which when we're in the situation, we don't necessarily see the bigger picture. We go, oh my God. Or in Thailand, they go, oh, my Buddha. <laughs> but, but, you know, what's it about? Well, it's about a journey. I believe in goals. I'm a goal setter and I believe I'm a goal getter. And my clients and my students, all my workshops and online tutorials, one-to-ones and what have you, are to get people to set goals. But to get the goals, goal setter, goal getter. But if you're only happy when you've got the goal, you might wait, like I have, 15, 20, 25 years to be happy. Because some of these goals that I set, I got straight away, and some of them I got 10, 20 years later. And that's called being outcome-orientated. Because you're focused on the outcome. And there's nothing wrong with that, but what do you do in the meantime? It's like 365 days of the year. 52 weeks and then you're working and you get four weeks holiday and you enjoy yourself being on holiday and you work to earn the money to go on holiday if you like but are you going to be miserable for 48 weeks of the year to be happy for the four weeks that you're on holiday I hope not and if that's you waiting to be happy when you've lost weight waiting to be happy when your relationship's perfect, waiting to be happy when you get the perfect job, waiting to be happy on holiday, waiting for Saturday night down the pub, 
waiting to be happy on the golf course, whatever it is that you're waiting for, you're wasting now. Because that's called being outcome orientated. When you get the outcome, you'll be happy. It's far better to be what they call process organ, um, orientated. Well done, Denise. Trying to see the bigger picture, getting there, and I am happier. Sorted. Thanks for sharing that. My dad taught me, when he said it, he said to me, he said, um, valuable lesson really. One is, I've said, told people this before, but I'll say it again because it's worth noting. His house was called Meda. He's a Manchester born Salford guy, and I was born in Manchester, although actually my grandmother's Welsh. So I moved to Wales, but he called his house Meda. M E D A H. And I thought it was a Welsh word, but it wasn't. It was um, an acronym for Make Every Day a Holiday. M E D A H. Make Every Day a Holiday. So that was his philosophy on life to enjoy every day. That you can be on holiday every day. You don't have to go away to do it. I mean, I lived in Old Colwyn and now in Thailand. People come to Thailand for holidays, people came to Old Colwyn for holidays. Why should I be miserable in a place where people come for a holiday? What's the difference between them and me? If I'm bored and frustrated and angry down in a holiday place, what's wrong with me? Other people come for a laugh. I've got to have their mindset. You've got to have your mindset. You can't allow your circumstances to consume you. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be laughing all the time and feeling powerful and great when the shit hits the fan when things really happen that are, that, that are dramatic. No, and it's not right to suppress your emotions, but ultimately you can make a choice. And my dad said to me, he said, this was the second lesson other than make every day a holiday. And this was the lesson, he said, a lot of people, there's a saying that, I suppose one day I'll laugh at this. So Denise has just admitted there, thank you that you're happier now than you were because you begin to see the bigger picture. When you didn't see the bigger picture, Denise, when you were stuck in the smaller picture, if you like, as I have many times in my life, and I'm sure everybody watching this feels stuck in a small picture. They feel like, little me, I have no power. Because you're a victim to something that's not your fault, or maybe it is your fault, but whatever, you're a victim to it. You've Something's gone wrong or you've done something wrong yourself. You'll probably in those moments think, well, I can't wait for this to be over. One day I'll laugh at this. One day I'll be able to look back and have a laugh about this. How many people have said that to you? To you. Two cameras working here. Don't worry. One day it'll be over, you'll be able to laugh at this. My dad, wise as he was, said to me, laugh now and laugh again later. Laugh twice. Laugh at it now. And don't stop laughing. Because really, everything that's going on in your life is just a story. And if you get stuck in the story, and you believe the story, then it's hard to get out of the story. That's the little picture, that's little me. And this is what happens with the media. We believe half the stuff that they're telling us and most of it isn't true. I mean, we know that from the Iraq war. That's just one massive example. Weapons of mass destruction and we bombed the living daylights out of Iraq and Iran and it wasn't true. And how many people died for that lie? I won't go into the politics of that, but what other lies are we getting from this device that's called Tell Lie Vision? Television, tell live vision, and watching these programs, how we are being programmed to believe this stuff, the Brexit stuff, which could have been resolved yonks ago, but these politicians who love debating because they come from private schools with debating societies and they're all lawyers who love discussion and debate and good luck to them. But it's affecting us dramatically. Look how the pounds dropped. Look at the jobs that are going, look at the high street, look at people's pensions and the NHS and everything else. Is it working? No, it's not. What's it doing? 
it's depressing and suppressing us. We're going into financial crisis. We're going into social crisis. They're talking now about bringing the army in because there's going to be social unrest. Now, have you seen those news reports that are coming out on the media on Tel Live Vision? About the tooling up the army and they're going to bring the territorials out and the bringing lads back from foreign countries because they're expecting riots on the streets. How's that for programming to put that idea into people's minds? It's ridiculous. You know it's ridiculous, I know it's ridiculous. It's organised, it's an agenda to divide. They don't want unity. Whatever your opinion on the EU, and I'm not going into politics here, but all politics is divisive. In other words, it, it divides people. Organised religion does it. Governments do it. it. It's to keep us all in our place. It's to remove our personal power. It's so that we go to the government and say, this is the problem, what are you going to do about it? And the food that we eat is crap and we're given pharmaceutical medication instead of doing holistic things and we're ill and we're sick to death, literally. And then we go to the doctor and we hand over our responsibility and say to the doctor, what are you going to do about it? Help me, little me, help me. Please government, help me. Please doctor, help me. Please teacher, teach me. Do you think the teaching structure that we've got really prepares people for adult life in this world maybe some work related training is valid but did algebra do you any good at school controlling totally agree with you lucy it is controlling it's insulting I'm into personal power. We've got to take our responsibility. We've got to take our power back. And there's some basic things that we can do to do that. We'll talk about all these individual components in future chats. And if you want to continue after this live, I'm more than happy to do that either as a group in the, in, in the live conversation or with you as individuals. Let's talk about this. And if at the moment you're enjoying this, then share it with your friends, put it on your page or, or invite your friends to join in. And I'm hoping that we'll continue this every week, once a week at least, and put in notifications as well so you get the notifications so you know when I'm coming on. And if you've got anything that you want to talk about, and I'll even bring you on cam, because I want this to be powerful because we deserve to be powerful in my mike body spirit group i've got a group of people that i call my snowplow group and a snowplow as we know because it's snowing in europe at the moment clears the road allows things to get through and i've got healers psychics empaths transmitting teaching radiating healing and watching world events and personal events and making a difference shifting I have this wonderful expression which is when the shit hits the fan shift put an F in shit and shift because only if we take our power back only if we realize how wonderfully miraculous we are to be here we are in the human race living in the now the most evolved human being that's ever been evolved the next generation will be higher evolved than us but we are at the top of the pecking order at the moment so well done for being here for getting to this day honor it you are a unique being don't be put down by anybody don't allow anybody to take your power away no psychic vampires no insults go on what i call a pma diet not pmt <laughs> little joke there a pma diet 
positive mental attitude. Don't allow anybody to devalue you. Don't devalue anybody else. Nothing that comes out of your mouth should be destructive, negative, condemning. If you can't say something nice, say nothing at all. And if something bad happens, laugh. And when you're through it, laugh again. And make every day a holiday. Because what is, is. Buddha says. That suffering doesn't come from what is. It's from resisting what is. It's what we resist that gives us our suffering. If we've been given an illness. If we've been given an unhappy relationship. An unhappy job. An unhappy house. Whatever it is that you're not pleased about. A loss. Financial. Personal. A challenge. That is what it is. Your decisions got you there. And your decisions can get you out of there. Just step back, get your control, take responsibility and do something about it. And if I can help you with that, guys, I will. But it's your resistance to what is the situation that takes your power. And the media and all this bad news that we're getting, all this worry stuff that we're getting, puts you into fear. Fear, F-E-A-R. False expectations appearing real. We've had MEDA. Make every day a holiday. This is false expectations appearing real. Or quite often, false news. Or quite often for ourselves, it's fantasised expect expectations feeling real. Hi, Daniel. Thanks for joining. The things that we make up in our heads because we assume we've got the facts. Quite often we, we're reacting to gossip. Second-hand information, lies, we haven't got the big picture. Get the facts. If you've been given an illness, get the facts. Don't go into fear, go into empowerment. If it's about money, if it's about jobs, if it's about finance, get the facts. And don't listen to people who you don't respect. Lots of experts out there who know nothing. They've got certificates, but they're not. Wise. I mean, look at our politicians, eminently qualified, idiots. Look at what they're doing. Trust yourself. I'll be teaching you in future presentations how to seek higher counsel, how to access the divine. Higher self, your inner tutor, which is your intuition. That's where your power is. Your power's within. Don't look outside. Now, let me just do a little experiment. Two experiments. First of all, I want you, I can't see you, but I'll do it. I want you to point to me. And presumably you'll now be pointing at your device because that's where I am on the screen. <laughs> and if you were in front of me and we're in a meeting or a seminar or a workshop, you'd be pointing to me, wouldn't you? There you go. I've got two cameras going. So if I look a bit cross-eyed and boss-eyed, don't worry about that. I'm just working two lenses. But th there I am. There. You'd point to me, wouldn't you? Okay, well, you're wrong. Point to yourself. Point to yourself. That's where I am. I'm inside you. And you're inside me. And where are you hearing me? I'm not over there. I'm in here. It's being vibrated from your speaker, but you're hearing me through your ears, not with your ears, through your ears. And you're converting it with your brain. Everything that you experience is in here. It's not out there, it's in here. All the things that piss you off, all the things where the shit hits the fan... And all the beauty as well, all the good stuff, it's all in here. Everything's in here. It's being processed by your brain, this massive control center, central, central processor of the mind, the brain. You're receiving input, data, signals, vibrations. And then you're converting it into what you've been taught it means. 
And there's two two points there which I'll bring up in other lives, which is meaning making, making meanings. And quite often the meanings that you make are not the same as other people make because of your mood. Moods create a changed perception and they create perception. In a good mood, you'll be able to cope with a lot more than you can in a bad mood or a low mood. And if you've got no power and you're in victim and you're in survival, then you've got two responses, which is fight and flight. And in flight, you don't want to be there. You don't concentrate. You just want to scarper and be off. An ultimate fight. Well, fight can be anything from um, being in bed, pulling the sickie, not turning into work, not turning up in your life. You might turn up in your life, but you build a brick wall around yourself. So you sort of cut the world off. An ultimate suicide, or ultimate flight is suicide, which is very common, particularly in young males. And I was working on a project in uh, in South Wales where I was um, helping um, young males with a youth team because there was a lot of deaths in uh, certain areas of South Wales. And um, it's an epidemic. And in fact, there's been a lot of that on television as well. You go on the internet and you'll see... Hi, Julie. Thanks for joining me. You'll see a lot on suicide at the moment because um, they're calling it selfie harm, not self harm, but selfie harm because people are going on social media, vulnerable kids, vulnerable adults as well, and, 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 and youths, and they're getting cyber bullied and cyber pressure which again is a form of social hypnosis. It's the negativity coming th through screens and affecting their emotions. It's hitting them in the mind, it's hitting them in the heart. Which is what I say, there's nothing out there, it's just information coming at you and then you're reacting to it. And it's in your reaction, it's in your resistance, as I said before, that does the damage. Now the problem is, that if you're not powerful, it's easy for other people to blow you over. It's like a tree that's got no roots. It's easily, you know, a car hits it, it flattens it. When I taught martial arts, I taught people to stand up strong, to have a strong foundation in the way that they plant their feet, literally on the floor. Wide stance, strong stance. And then they can be hit and they can block and they can punch and kick from strength and stability. If you're not stable, balanced emotionally, physically, spiritually and mentally. It's easy for people to take advantage of you. You're vulnerable. And trust me, guilt throwers find guilt catchers. And aggressors, predators, find people in victim mentality. So as I say, the response of fear or false expectations appearing real, fantasized expectations appearing real, all this stuff that comes at you through the media and from our friends and, and so-called friends and uh, the people that we vibrate with, basically you either run, flight or you fight. How many people do you know and, 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 and who makes you want to fight? Who who makes you confrontational? Who makes you aggressive? I was bullied as a kid at school, which is why I learnt martial arts. I did Jiu Jitsu, I did Kung Fu, I did Wing Chun, and then I got into mixed martial arts. And I became a fourth Dan instructor, as most people know, at Abigail Leisure Centre for 10 years, St. Joseph's in Colwyn Bay, John Bright's, uh, Clandullis Hall, all over the place, used to compete all over the Northwest. I had some fantastic students. I was very honoured. And we run a powerful system of self-defence. We never attacked. But we used to defend ourselves. I taught protection. And to be powerful, you need protection. As I say, you need to be strong and grounded and rooted. Because if you haven't got strong roots in your belief system you don't believe in yourself if you haven't got willpower and personal power it's easy for other people to come along 
and influence you. And you need to have a strong energy field, a strong mental energy field, a strong heart energy field, a strong physical aura, and emanate power and confidence from humility, from love and kindness, with this positive mental attitude, this PMA, where nothing comes out of your mouth that's derogatory and, can, uh, and, and devalues people. And don't argue. Now, because I'm strong-minded, I like to defend my position. I never think I'm right, but I always try and give people the benefit of my experience, if they want to hear it, if they want to to learn from it. Some people don't, so I get heckled. When I get heckled, I step back. I have a three times rule. I tell them what I think if they invite me to. I tell them what I would do. I never tell them what they should do. I tell them what I would do. Second time they come at me, I tell them again and remind them what I said the first time. And if they keep asking the same questions or they keep being devaluing, insulting, heckling, disrespectful, unkind, and I feel like they're trying to take my power away, to control me, to bully me, to scare me, to control me, I tell them what I think they're doing. I say, I feel that you're trying to control me. I feel that you don't respect me. I feel that you're trying to intimidate me. I feel that you're trying to put me down. Now, the thing is, you can't ever be wrong for the way you feel. So you don't tell people you're putting me down, you're trying to intimidate me, you're bullying me, because they might say, I'm not. Don't tell them what you think that they're doing. Tell them how you feel, because only you know how you feel. And once you've told them confidently and the cat's out the bag, quite often some people didn't realise that that's the way their personality is. They are unaware of it. And actually it's kind to tell people. The office bully, sexual predators, not serious sexual predators, but the, you know, the person in the office that tries to touch you too intimately, unwantedly, unasked for, to get away with it, You'll get more of that, but if you tell them straight away, then they know where they stand. All sorts of situations where people do things at us, if we stand our ground, step back and tell them kindly, without getting aggressive, without fighting and without flighting, <laughs> without running away, quite often they'll leave us alone. So I tell people how I feel. And then the next thing that I do is I tell them it's not going to work. I feel that you're trying to frighten me. I feel that you're trying to intimidate me. I feel that you don't respect me. I feel this, I feel that. It doesn't work. I just tell them that. Just make that statement, it doesn't work. You're trying to frighten me. I feel that, it doesn't work. And then they've got a choice then to either stop, apologise... Not that I'm looking for an apology, I don't need an apology. I just want to change the energy of the situation. But I stand my ground and I maintain my power. In fact, it makes me feel more powerful. It builds character. And it gives them the opportunity to know what they're doing. And quite often I've found that they will change the way that they're coming at me. And because you've done it, and if it's in an office or a team or a family, if you tell them, they might think about the way they are with everybody else. And it might be that everybody else really wanted to tell them, but they didn't have the power to do it. And because you have, you'd be doing everybody else a favour. So I hope that technique works. And if you want to ask me more about that, then put your comments in the comments box here or, 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 or get in touch with me after this going live. But where does your power come from? We know what takes our power, television, situations, people. Power, in my opinion, there's several sources for it. Number one, are you eating powerful food or are you eating crap? Are you eating the right amount at the right time? Are you eating energy giving healthy foods? Now, it's not expensive, but natural foods, not processed foods, not convenience foods, not fast foods. Not sweet, sugary, greasy, 
expensive food quite often. What do you drink? Do you drink a lot of fresh, clean water to detoxify yourself, to clear yourself of the stresses? Because stress in your life releases cortisol and adrenaline and hydrocortisone into your body. And you need to be drinking water to get rid of it. And if you don't, it takes your power away. It blocks your system. It blocks your energy matrix. So drink plenty of water. Eat healthy, energy-giving, fresh food. Eat small and often. Eat what you want. Nothing's taboo, but you know what you should be eating. So power, energy, comes from good food. It comes from sunlight as well and exercise. Do you walk? Or sit outside in the sun. Now it's snowing it at the moment. But you can get daylight bulbs in your house. We're told you shouldn't have a sunbed. What you're told really is don't overdo it. But UVA and UVB is very, very useful to the body. It increases... Um, is it called... Um, you, you tell me. Is it melanin in, in the skin? The, the stuff that makes... Freckles come out. Um, and it increases serotonin levels. Sunlight. Good food. Water. Nothing wrong with tea and coffee and the occasional glass of wine on a beer. But if that's... You know, if you're having 10 cups of coffee and no water, you're basically drinking mud all day. Tea's got tannin in, which is acidic. And I love a cup of tea. But look at the milk that you're consuming as well. Because we're the only species that drinks... The lactation of another animal. Milk is the excretion of a cow. There's very few other species on the planet that rob the mother's milk of another species and drinks it. And if you want to know what milk's doing for you, look at the size of a cow or a bull. The hormones in milk as well, force farmed, It's going to be running through you if you drink tons of milk. And we told them milk's good for you. Well, it is in moderation. That's what I say, moderation. But if you're eating so much food, you've got to realise that that takes energy to digest it, to break it down and to get the goodness out of it, if there's any goodness in it in the first place. So eat small. Give your system a chance. You don't want to be eating something now and it comes out in four days' time. That'll give you cancer. That food, that bolus of food in your colon, in your bowel, will be rotting there. <laughs> Degrading until it comes out. You want something that goes in today and at the latest it comes out tomorrow. Keep it fresh, in and out. Because you know how lethargic you become after a big meal. So there's no energy in eating big. And you don't have to wolf your food down. The expression wolf your food down is an animal instinct. To eat quick, eat slow. Give yourself a chance to digest your food healthily. Catch you again, Denise. Thanks for coming on. You can watch it later. The fact of the matter is that what you eat and what you drink can change your energy levels your personal power, as well as some of the emotional and mental coaching that I'm going to be sharing in these talks. But we know that food does it, we know sunlight does it, we know drinks do it. Activities also deplete energy. People do. Programs do. Thoughts. That's the key. Thoughts. Perceptions. The decisions that we make when we take in information, when we experience something through our five senses, touch, taste, sight, sound and smell, make a massive difference to our personal power. In a minute, a piece of news can deflate us or inflate us. And if you're the sort of person that takes something badly and reacts then you're doing yourself absolutely no favours. What you need to learn is control. 
his balance, his how to not make a knee jerk response, is how to calmly process what's happening in front of you and realizing, as I said before, that you're experiencing it uniquely inside of you. And so you can choose uniquely how to respond to the external stimulus of the event, the piece of news, the situation, the experience. It's just an experience. Your response doesn't have to be the same as it's always been. You don't always have to be frightened of spiders. You don't always have to cry at sad films. You don't always have to be frightened or intimidated when somebody shouts at you. You can change. You can decide that you've had enough of that old you and you're going to reinvent yourself and come up with some new responses that are more empowering or at least aren't as weakening to you. These things weaken us to the point where we can end up having nervous breakdowns. Our nervous system has had enough. We've been evicting for so long on high alert, hypersensitive to the things that, we, that frighten us. And quite a lot of them, as I say, are fantasized or false, not true. Just things that people have told us that we've believed, but they're not true when we get the facts and get some perspective. We don't have to react as we always have. React is doing what we've always done. It's like rewind, it's repeat, react. The re is do again. We can act. Don't react, act. Act powerfully or act in a balanced way. Because in reacting, fight or flight, there's changes within our body that take place. Our body powers up for running or fighting. The breathing increases. The heart rate increases. Respiration increases, which is why it feels like your heart pounding in your chest when you're frightened, scared, anxious, tense. It's the onset of a panic attack. It might not turn into a full-blown panic attack, but you're probably not far from it. And in that moment... The gateway to self-control is the breath. It's the decision to take control and then it's the breath. And the breath can give us the control by concentrating on the breathing, being alert in the moment, but focusing inside and then the breath can empower us. If you want to understand positive breathing techniques, and how to empower yourself with the breath, then speak to me after I've gone off going live. Or inbox me or email me at mike at mrmikegarner.com and I'll help you with that. Stress, anxiety, tension, panic, fears can all be shifted. When the shit hits the fan, you can shift in the moment. You can get your power back. Get your balance back first and then empower yourself. Because from a place of personal power, you can take responsibility and live a personally powerful life. Your personality, you were born to be amazing. You are a miracle. You're not born to be a shrinking violet and quiet and in your place. Little me. You're here to be amazing, to make a difference, to sing a song every day to make every day a holiday and to go to your grave with a legacy of success and some of that success and some of that learning and some of that power will come through disasters and nightmares as i've said but you will survive them laugh at them in the moment when you can and then when they're over you can look back take the learning move forward build character go up another level and laugh again and then teach other people from your learning so that when they're faced with your difficulties, they've got your wisdom. How good is that? Imagine that you are a flame. And just ask yourself now, today, 
or this week or this year so far or last year or in the last 10 years have you been a strong flame or a weak flame who makes you weak when you've got certain people around you know who those certain people are that make you weak and then you need to put protection around yourself when you're with those people that that, that take your power away that try to put out your flame extinguish you they'll never extinguish you your candle will burn for eternity but in certain moments and sometimes certain weeks months years some decades it might be not as bright as other decades and it might almost feel that it's blown out but even when your body is no longer able to um, maintain its integrity, your flame will never go out because you're eternal. It's an eternal flame and it will be reborn as a stronger flame in a body or out of body in another incarnation. Trust me, that's how it works and we'll talk about this in another talk. But while you're here in this incarnation, it's your job to burn bright, to burn strong, to burn powerfully and the breath you can breathe in and send it into that fire. And we know it's like wafting a fire and boosting the flames. And as you breathe out, breathe out, fire, be a dragon, a powerful dragon, not a mouse, a lion, not a chicken, an eagle, not a weak flame, a strong, beautiful, powerful flame that burns bright as a beacon for everybody to see as an example whatever your finances whatever your age whatever your sex whatever your race whatever your situation whatever your income whatever your status you can be a strong flame and you know people who are strong flames who are they in your life get round those people absorb their positivity and if you can't get round them, watch them on YouTube or Google them and watch their blogs and get their courses and follow their example. Read their biographies or autobiographies. Be like them. Choose a positive role model. The role model of somebody powerful. And you'll probably find, find in their powerful lives that they've had lots of failures also. And as I said at the beginning, it's their ability to rise to the challenge that dictates whether or not these challenges defeat you or ascend you to levels of personal power and achievement beyond your expectations. And I've exceeded all my goals. I've goal set, a goal get, and now I've set new goals. And so can you. You're born to be powerful. It's your birthright to be powerful. You decided, as a spark, as a soul, without a body, to come into this life to do something amazing. And I encourage you to be amazing. And if you haven't found out what your major definite purpose is, what your life mission is, then meditate, go to bed tonight, and ask to have a dream, to have it revealed to you. Quite often, if I've got a long car journey ahead, I'll know that driving almost puts you into hypnosis you get to your destination and you've forgotten that you've gone through traffic lights around roundabouts and you're almost in a trance you drive the best you you are in a trance it's called being in the zone i play the keyboard and the guitar in the zone i swim in the zone i'm doing this in the zone i love doing this I'm not thinking about it can't no notes don't know what i'm saying i'll watch it back and see what i've said Thank you for being with me and watching. You honour me. Honouring yourself. You are me. I am you. We're all in unity consciousness. I'll talk about that again. But don't go to your grave. Don't finish this incarnation without fulfilling the mission that you were here to achieve. A powerful mission. And when you are working towards a goal, 
that's when you're at your best. It's as I said at the beginning, it's being in the process. It's being process orientated, not outcome orientated. Being happy, moving towards the goal and being happier when you've got it and then setting another goal. So it's an ongoing evolution of development and growth and learning and fun and energy. And positively working on your personality and helping others do the same. And that's exactly what it's all about. Hi, Tina. And this is where your power comes from. And it doesn't come from being aggressive or angry. Being angry about something just adds to anger. That fight and flight. If you've got something that's going on, do something positive about it. Like I said, positive mental attitude. Don't say negative things. It only adds to negativity. Don't get angry with people, even though things piss you off. When the shit hits the fan, you shift. Because if you get angry, you're going into fight and flight, and there's no power in that. There's physical power, but there's no emotional stability. There's no mental connection. There's no spiritual connection. It's short-lived, and you close doors. It's not what the universe wants. It's not what humanity wants. Look at what arguing does in the world. It doesn't do anything. Wars don't work. Don't have an inner war. Don't beat yourself up. Don't be angry with yourself. And don't be angry with each other. Get away from people that don't agree with you. Don't tell them they're wrong. It's took them all their life to make those decisions. You won't change their mind. There's a beautiful expression which says something like a person's opinion that's changed against their will is of the same opinion still. You can argue with somebody and you might have a more bombastic, dominating power and influence. You might have better verbal dexterity you might have higher intellect so you might be better at arguing but you won't change their mind they might even agree with you when they're in front of you and let you win but when they go away they'll just go back to the way they were because it took them all their life the only person that can change somebody's mind is themselves and the only person that can change your mind is yourself so i'm never saying i'm right i'm just offering this stuff but be powerful Personal power, taking responsibility and switching off from all this negativity. And if you want to watch these soaps for amusement, be amused, but don't let them get you down. Realise that they are programmes. Program yourself. Take responsibility for your own personal power using positive visualisations and affirmations and positive goals, positive mental attitude. As I've discussed... And if you want any help with that, you know where I am. But I'm not here to advertise myself. I'm just saying, you don't need me. It's all over YouTube. There's lots of people teaching what I teach and sharing what I share. And there's books and there's free stuff in all sorts of places and spaces being offered by all sorts of faces. And you know yourself. You are your own best expert. So be powerful. Be that strong flame and get away from people who try to blow your flame out and do things that reignite that flame within you and make this year, 2019, your best year yet. And whenever you're watching this in the future on YouTube, Vimeo or Facebook, make this day the best day and make tomorrow the best day. And every day, do your best with what you've got right now and aspire to be something amazing. Become a legend, a leg end. <laughs> because you can. And believe your own bullshit as well. Stop listening to all this stuff that everybody else is telling you. And if somebody tells you something, don't accept it as true. Go and research it. Find out for yourself. Because it keeps life interesting. And by being alert and awake and kind and loving and strong and positive, that's where your personal power comes from. It's your personality. And we're being told all the time, aren't we, that... You know, oh, we're coming out of Brexit, oh, we're staying in Brexit, and oh, this and oh, that, and oh, there's going to be civil unrest, and it's going to be cold now, have your flu jab, you know, eat crap food, take Gaviscon. Don't be told, you know what's best for you. I'm going to finish there. I didn't know what I was going to say, and I could talk and talk and talk and talk, but you honour me by watching. And I'm going to come on once a week, and I'll put on the agenda what I'm going to talk about, and if it interests you, share it. Tell other people about it. 
and I'm hoping that next time I'm going to bring somebody else on cam, maybe two or three people. I'm going to have a guest, and I'm also going to maybe bring some of you on cam, if you want to, and if you don't, that's absolutely fine. But for now, this is Mike from MrMikeGarner.com, saying I love you. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be powerful, be amazing. Life is wonderful. These series of talks that I'm going to be doing this year, once a week, are all about the uniqueness of life. And next time I come on, I'm going to be sharing some techniques as well. But for now, build that flame up inside yourself. Get yourself on that PMA diet, that positive mental attitude, where nothing comes out of your mouth that's devaluing. Make your home a beautiful place to be in. In your home, when you close your door, it's your castle, your cave, your palace. Make it a place of love and laughter and fun. Fill it with beautiful things. That's where your power comes from. Eat wonderful food. Drink water and wonderful drinks so that you hydrate and detoxify your body, as I've already said. Get out into sunlight. Do amazing things. And change your mind. Don't do what you've always done. Stop reacting. Start acting. Don't go into fight or flight. Go into control. Tell people what they're doing to you by the way that you feel. You can't be wrong by saying how you feel. I feel that you're doing it. I feel that you're doing that. And when they tell you you're wrong, say, well, no, I'm not wrong because that's how I feel. But don't argue with them. And then add the words. It didn't work. It doesn't work. And I'm going to leave you with this. Because this is powerful in itself. Start using this one affirmation. And I'll remind you again next time we talk. But this affirmation changed my life. And it's this. When something happens. And you're walking away. Instead of reacting. Turn around in your mind. And say that didn't get to me. Immediately. That didn't get to me. And drop it there and then. Don't carry it. Leave it at the site where the thing happened that displeased you, that put you into dis-ease, which if you hang on to it, it'll give you disease. Get control in that moment. Take your power back. Breathe into that flame inside and reignite it to be a big, strong flame and say, that didn't get to me. He didn't get to me. She didn't get to me. They didn't get to me. That thing that I read on Facebook didn't get to me. That program didn't get to me. I didn't get to me. If you self-sabotage by putting yourself down, just laugh and say, that didn't get to me. And keep saying that things don't get to you. Because they only get to you if you allow them to. And when you allow other people to get to you, and situations you're handing over your personal power to other people and you're making yourself reactive stop reacting start acting start al stop allowing things to get to you reclaim your power and be amazing god bless good night